Alright, time for the next installment of the Beginner's Guide series. Yes, I'm redoing Viego because of the crit changes they made. So I, uh, yeah, the, 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 or the crit changes to Viego, the buffs to Viego essentially. There's definitely been some changes in item build options and stuff like that. So it just felt like redoing one makes the most sense here. So that's what we'll be going for. And apart from that, I mean, yeah. There is an entire playlist in the description because I'm basically done with the beginner series. Uh, so you can find any champ you want to find, basically. There are a couple here and there that I didn't, but you should be able to find your champion. For the most part. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so I am against the Namumu here, which is pretty chill. I will be clearing towards both side here as well. Just allow he's one of those champs that you don't really do anything for. For the most part, like there are some gank opportunities for this champion, but going towards top doesn't do much because she just has like the enemy under the turret the entire time. And it's just like, well, yeah, OK, cool. You know, that type of deal. And the uh, bot lane, there's just going to be way more gank pressure on that one. Like Pike hooks in like the Blitzcrank 4, Blitz is dead. That type of deal. So it's going to be generally easier. And we're just going to go for the full clear here as well. Now, Viego's kit's pretty straightforward, apart from, obviously, when it comes to ults and passive use to, uh, like, all those other champions. That's where things start to become very difficult, so that's just something you're going to have to get used to. My bot lane is already winning. Interesting. Uh, but for the most part, like, your Q is just uh, HP-based damage, current HP-based damage, so that's a good damage output there. Your W is a stun. Uh, the longer you charge this, the longer the stun lasts. You also are slightly slowed while using it. But yeah, that's basically that. And your E gives you the shroud that you can hit into a wall, which will give you additional attack speed when you're in it. For your initial full clear, though, it's not worth picking up because your Q second point is faster. A QWQ is just slightly faster. It is what it is. And the W on that. Put up a bit of damage, make sure to use the pet to my advantage here too, and then we can finish that off. And here we're just going to go for the full clear. It's the most consistent thing you can do, especially with the 13.5 changes coming up as well. Like, just full clearing is the way to go. L allows for less mistakes because it allows you to not, like, fall super far behind early if you do happen to make a mistake. And most people will make mistakes, especially lower elo players. Of course, there will be mistakes made. So just the consistency of this is going to be great. Good. Uh, best gank angle for bot lane would be a lane gank right now, so that's what I'm going to go for, potentially. If it's possible. My misfortune is completely hard pushing though, which is slightly unfortunate, but oh wow. Like I don't know why the pike committed to that play before I even got on the range, so he basically just wasted my time, but I guess it is what it is. Someone went for the top gank, okay. Did end up getting that one. Oh, she started with a tear. Wow, my guy, that's greedy as hell. He actually killed him as well, Jesus. Okay, I guess I should have walked this way around. I probably can dive this, potentially. Just need, they just need to push the wave out. Gotta finish him off. The way not to hit turret there is activate target champions only. I'm gonna have to help. I didn't need to push the wave, I'm scared. Am I gonna make the recall here? If I can get the re I should be able to get the recall here. Okay, good. Very good. So yeah, toggle target champions only there is a pretty big one, because uh, that's gonna allow you to uh, make sure you don't click the turret. Which for me is like the key next to my one. That can be anything for you. I think the default key is the key thing next to your one. Right, so let's see if we can go top right now. Uh, Darius could be hitting level 6 soon, I think. I'm not actually sure when he's going to hit it. It should be soonish. But I'm pretty sure he should have his flash on the cooldown. So if I run up now, this should be a pretty good gank opportunity. Please don't pressure him too hard, Elawi. I need him to, like, actually... Did I just walk over that thing? I may have. Okay. I think he's going to recall here already. Uh, he's, he is already running. I know he's in this bush, but there's nothing I can do about it. He's just going to miss the wave. 
At this point, I'm just gonna pressure for him to miss the wave. It's fine. I'll take this camp on its spawns. I'll wait for it, and I should be okay. I think I may have accidentally walked over the thingy here without realizing it. Which prompted him to then just completely walk back, so I guess it is what it is. There's the Amumu gang. I could in theory just pressure the Darius here completely. And don't allow him to walk up and miss another wave, which I think I might do. Because if you do this, like you like this is this is gonna get pretty damn tricky for him. Allow we ult and he's dead. Yeah, this is this is disgusting. We know for a fact that Amumu is bolt. He might get dragon out of this, but overall he loses. Tr like Darius is just absolutely doomed. So one dragon loss for this entire play is definitely not bad. Perfect. This is really, really bad for Darius. Like, he's just lost, like, four or five waves, and Elawi just got, like, so much gold out of that. Which, for the trade of one dragon, I essentially just won top lane completely. So that should hopefully pay out. This is something you can do, especially if you spot the enemy jungler bot lane. It can get a little dicey if your laner doesn't know how to, um, how to dive stuff properly. So that could potentially pose a problem, so definitely be mindful of it. And if you're not too confident with diving stuff either, then obviously recommending something like this is a bit, a bit dicey as well. But yeah. That is pretty much the required play though, if you want to like do it right. As we, look, we have to punish for the fact that Amumu went for the bot gank. Uh, towards the Darius and actually trade like a massive favorable trade for my team side for the dragon because I can't take a herald yet because it's too early for the herald right so something has to be traded which in this case has to be the uh oh God. he is probably dead yeah he missed the thing he's already dead there's no reason for me to run there now I was never gonna make that anymore for me now I'll just go for my next clear here Darius definitely has a ward in the river as well. My entire bot side jungle will be up, so I just need to make sure I don't drop my overall consistency for my camps. Should be able to get mid wave here as well, because Fizz is never going to get it, so that's quite a decent amount of XP for me. Really? Okay, cool. I pick up whatever I can here, because I, I don't want this XP to go to waste. I mean, junglers do get reduced XP from this, but... It's better than nothing, you know? It's better than letting it go completely the way. It's just lost it and it's fine. Uh, I mean, Amumu could technically rush the Rift Herald here, especially seeing me mid lane like that. So that could be a move from him at this moment in time, which would suck. But I think my play is just finish this clear off, reset, and then try to see if I can do a Rift Herald. Probably the best move I have at the moment. How much is my Bladed Rune King gonna cost me? 2400. Now, build wise, by the way, I have. Yeah, okay, this is what I mean. This is also like Darius. That's, that's the entire thing, basically. That's just, yeah. Amumu can't fix that lane because it's Alawi, right? Like, that champion, if you get a lead on that champion, which is what I gave her with the extra dive for Darius and stuff, and also the turret gold, Darius is gonna be behind massively, and then there is no way a jungler can actually salvage a Alawi lane. Because the second you try to salvage an Alawi lane, you will essentially just double kill into an Alawi because of the ult situation, right? So because of that, focusing on that and giving her the lead is going to pay off massively. Here we go in. On him. Hook him in. Perfect. No, I didn't want to tank that for an extra hit. Jesus Christ, I accidentally misclicked on it. Uh, that's very good. And that's the engage. We are look hello, turret aggro. That's annoying. Oh God. Yeah, on this HP, I'm not gonna risk it. Because what's gonna happen here is like I go up, the Amumu ults me and I'm dead. Not worth it. Use the blitz hook there to finish out the Astro because you have no dashes left. That's why I focus blitz or focus the other guy first. Play the Rune King first item. Uh, I'll talk into the items built a little bit here we first i want to say i'm gonna go for the top scuttle into the rift herald because we just saw a movement bot lane it's gonna be the play here but the items right um the crit item update has made it so that crit items are more viable i have tried the uh shield bow essence reaver type of setup that type of deal that you see shield bow essence reaver infinity edge 
with like press the attack and all that but for the most part blade of the rune king is just an insanely good first item spike this thing is so strong as a first item there's nothing that's better for your first initial item and the way i see it is the, you should be stronger for like the earliest stages of the game because then that way you can snowball harder instead of having a weaker earliest stage of the game and snowballing less hard but having a bit better scaling because for the most part your scaling is going to be fine anyway uh, so yeah that's why i like the blade of the rune king setup the most and then concourse just synergizes really well with like just overall viego uh like champion picking because it synergizes with most kits so you can use it to your advantage for the most part and then uh yeah from here you just go for the kraken slayer setup and go for that build it's the way i think is best for viego because you can go full squish crit mode and that, that, that type of deal but let's make sure i hit that hold on to it for as long as possible he just used ult and ghost so i'm actually cool with this look at that if i would have chased him out and he would have gotten a hit like that on me i would just i would have just been dead i should have ran away faster though i definitely shouldn't have given a, given him a hit opportunity what we see here as well uh amumu was just spotted top side right because he's trying to salvage top lane more so i definitely should just look for the dragon here soon also, Vladimir just used everything on me, so what I can do here is I can push this out. And then I, I don't want to take his cannon. I could just put a Herald on mid lane here to get the gold out of this, and then we can look for a dragon play afterwards, potentially. This should be a nice bounce. Very good. Make sure I stun him there. He actually got the turret to hit me. Wow. Uh, I, I played it I played it like a dumbass because the way I played it was that Fizz takes turret aggro, he goes in first, but obviously Fizz is gonna press E and drop turret aggro right away, and I didn't think about that, so I instantly got turret aggro, which I could not afford to get. So I actually the way I had to play that was like really let Fizz get it first and then go for it. Because yeah, again I couldn't afford to take turret aggro at all. Uh, so that kinda sucks for me, I suppose, but Kraken Slayer next. Go for top side here. So full clear all the way down. I mean, I could get dragon here, but I wouldn't. Like, if I walk towards this right now, I don't really have anything. I don't really do the dragon either. This guy's in base. There's no pressure there. So they either have it, like, right now, or, like, by the time Fizz gets back to mid and we have, like, one push going, we can go for it. I, don't, I wonder if they're doing it. I, I doubt it at this point, because they would have had it by now, most likely. I'm wondering... I'm really wondering if they're doing it. I think they are. They just have the, be the better pressure for it at the moment. Because only at about this moment in time is when I would have pressure for it, even a potential dragon. So... Right, she just wasted Misfortune Ultimate, so the fight now might be quite bad, actually. Please tell me he dies. Jesus Christ. Oh, this is not good. Jesus, that scared me. That's uh, still a kill. It's okay. I I wasn't like the, the angle on that was not going to be good for the dragon. Maybe I could have ran down there potentially, but like there was not there was no pressure there. So it's just don't think I was gonna get that dragon anyway. I definitely need to make sure I like I preemptively secure this next dragon. I can't keep giving those to him. For sure, but yeah. Let's mid, fight mid. Top lane's decided. The first dragon was just a complete second to top lane, and that just paid off massively, obviously, so that's really good for me. That's a play and a half right there. Really? Interesting. Walk in here and see what's up. Nothing. Right, it's cool. I have my entire jungle is down anyway, so I don't really have anything. 
I wouldn't be able to walk off to this. There's a ward here, so this is gonna see me, and the Ezreal's just gonna play super safe and walk away, most likely. Yeah, there it is. So unless this bike gets like some random ass engage, it's probably not gonna happen. There it is. I can wait potentially for the fizz. I should push out the heart. I should hard shove the wave in that case, because if we want to look for a dive, this has to be done. Oh, that's that silence actually messed me up and cost me my flash. That's disgusting. Did not want to pick that up. Now, I wanted to flash W and kill the S real that way, but the silence cancelled my W. Excuse me, I need to walk away from this because I need to wait for the ult to time out, otherwise I'm pretty screwed. Oh, you... And he single target ulted me as well. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. I didn't play like a Mumu was going to be able to be there as well. I probably should have just walked away completely. Yeah. That was a very, very good blitz ult to kind of not give me a kill. Because it cancelled my W and then pretty much flashed me afterwards, essentially. Because I already clicked it. In this situation, the second flat ults me. It's the moment I cannot walk forward anymore. So that's like, it basically forced me to walk back and I probably... Best call should have just been me uh, recalling in the bush here. And just ignoring the rest. Because I could not help that anymore. But I thought because it was maybe only going to be Vladimir, I could get like a stun off or something. But then I got a Mumu stunned and died. That's okay. I need to just go for the next for the next full clear here towards this Rift Herald. Pick up the Rift Herald. And we are chilling. Elawi is just popping off, which is really good. This, uh, that, that top lane situation has paid off massively for me. Which generally tends to happen if you do something like I just did this game for like an Alawi or like a Fiora or a Darius even. Champs like that, that, those are like, it's very hard to salvage those uh, for the enemy jungler. Because Darius would double kill you, Alawi is going to double kill you, Fiora is going to double kill you if you try to gank. And if you're not strong enough, it's going to really, really hurt. So, yeah, that's something to keep in mind potentially. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna want to get the. I need. I can't do Gromp here because the only way I get this Rift Herald and also get the Dragon is if I do it right now. Because otherwise, I would take too long and I would not get the Dragon in time, and that would not be good. So I need to get the Gromp, or I need to wait for the Gromp, or let the Gromp live for a bit. Oh, team, don't die now, please. We 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 have to get this Dragon. It would be really bad if we don't get it. They run top to in right now, that would be pretty good. I'm gonna put this down, Blitz just backed. We forced them back to mid lane to relieve pressure from Malawi. And then we can look for a dragon, hopefully. Get this down, and then I'm just gonna go do dragon right away. So Zwift Herald's gonna pressure on mid. And it should be good enough, I think, for me to just rush this down real quick. Because now Amumu is gonna show mid because of Rift Herald pressure, and then I should be able to get the dragon. Even if my team dies, this is fine, because dragon's worth more than the lives of them at the moment because i don't want to give him drake soul the only thing i'm kind of scared about here is that i potentially lose it because it's going to be too slow for me doing it but viego is pretty fast so i should be good yeah this that rift herald distraction in mid lane is going to give me this dragon basically and that's really all i care about at the moment making sure i get that is huge because i don't want to give him soul point try to pick all of this up as well uh, they're pushing for mid turret, but there's not, not much I can do about it. So I can probably get one more wave here and then just look for the recall after that. I see them on the map, so I don't have to be too scared of anything here, really. There we go. I kind of would like that scuttle. Just use my E for some move speed here. Be a bit faster about it. I'll just recall now, and then I'll invest my gold, and then I can clear up towards Baron. Let's try to stay as efficient as possible here. Be good. He's gonna get mid -tier. that's good. They should not be walking up here. This is extremely greedy at the moment. Especially with the, considering the fact that I just recalled, yeah, she's dead. I want precious... An enemy 
They got a turret. Okay, they, they actually ended up getting a one-for-one -one trade. That's pretty good. But they got a turret, and they should have just, like, walked away after the turret, because the positioning on the enemy team was not going to be good for them, but they didn't realize that in time. Because they... I was in base. Alawi was not going to be in a position to do anything there either, because Alawi was just going to look to split push for the rest of this game. That's just a guarantee. And, yeah, after that, the enemy team was all going to be there, essentially. So that was only going to end badly for them, uh, pretty, pretty much. Now, the thing here is, though, even though I would like to do something like Baron, I really can't, because my Misfortune is now dead, which is going to cost us a lot of Baron damage. And that basically means that I don't have, like, any room to look on the map at the moment, and my only real play is do this. Which is what I'm now doing. I would have considered, like, doing both side camps, potentially, and then look for, like, Baron before doing, like, top side camps, even. That's not an option in this situation. Pretty close game at the moment, but I'm gonna be doing really, really well here in a bit. I think I'm just gonna walk the top lane here, because I, what, what I think is gonna ha I'm gonna do this. What I think is gonna happen is this guy's gonna get rotated on. Sidestep that one with the W dash. Oh, uh, the Salawi is getting a little over jealous here. Stun the Darius so he can't hit him. Chase that through. Make sure I back up my Alawi here as much as possible. Very good. That's what's going to happen there. We, have, we don't have Alawi teleport. That kind of sucks. I don't really keep pushing there. I had to back up my Alawi there because I knew she was going to get flanked on. And I also, like, her ult was ready and to go and all that type of stuff. So it's going to be pretty good. She'll be able to do this for a bit, but I need the Pike to start tanking this. Also, whoever tanks Baron does 50% reduced damage to it, so I need this Pike to tank this right now. And that my damage output will go up. I don't have Smite, but I don't think it's gonna... I hope it doesn't matter, at least. It should be good. It's based on overall timing. Yeah, okay, we're good. Perfect. Uh, how much does this thing cost me? Where is it? 2800. Right. So actually going for, um, I, I can't, I, actually against this team I should go Navori Quick Blades instead of going Infinity Edge, if I think about it. Um, basically what you do is, the tankier the enemy team is, the better it is to get Navori. And the squishier the enemy team is, the better it is to get, uh, get Infinity Edge. Now this could potentially be a little bit too offensive for your liking. Um, so you can also opt to pick up... Just give me one second. Ow! Okay, that Blitzcrank hook almost hit me as well. So you can opt to pick up a Bloodthirster as well if you want for just overall additional sustain. Because the defensive items we're essentially going to use in this build are going to be Bloodthirster and Stoneplate. The sustain from Bloodthirster is essentially going to give you the HP sustain out of the build. Um alongside the overheal shield which is currently very 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 strong so that combination there is going to give you your hp and then your resistances are going to come from stone plate so you can just pick that up as your items uh, so it's just kind of a matter on how you want to do it if you feel like you're dying too much and think infinity edge is too big of a risk uh, for the item to take at this moment in time in your build then going for the bloodthirster next and then potentially even stone plate after into an infinity edge is completely fine um, what is going to happen though this game is what I like in like they don't have that much damage I can sustain myself pretty well so for the most part here I can just go into Vori quick blades into the bloodthirster and then get the sustain that way and the is going to give me more skill uptime which is really good as well so yeah basically what you're going to look for with that if you're facing a ton of squishies, like I, I'm facing Vlad, Darius, and Amumu here, and Blitz, they're all pretty tanky. They're like not squishy enough to justify the Infinity Edge. Uh, with a build setup like this, it's actually better to go Navori in those situations. Because the damage uptime on your skills is going to mean more, because your skills do HP% percent damage alongside your passive damage as well. So it's going to be better. And yeah, the sustain after these like three items, are, is, like, the sustain slash tankiness is going to be required. You're gonna have to get something along those lines. 
I'm gonna just recall with my Alawi here essentially. It's about the same timing. I'll just go to Navori next here, because I'm pretty confident in staying alive at this point. It should be fine. Uh, but note that after this Navori, my next two items are gonna be Bloodthirster and Stoneplate. And both of those are gonna give me more than enough survivability for the uh, teamfight stages coming up. Like the mid to late game type of teamfight stages, the survivability from those two items combined is gonna be enough. Because uh, current overheal on Bloodthirster is completely insane, so yeah. Something to look for for me right now as well is hitting the level 16 if I can, so try to pick up some of these camps here at least. I can see if I can really quickly find the Bloodthirster. The shield on this, as you can see, is absolutely huge. So this should be fine here. With the Navori extra like ability cooldown, this is really good. Yeah, perfect. And then we have the Umumu. Because as well, if you pick up enemy champs with this build, um, you get stats from them, right? So you're going to be generally fine. Pick this up. Let's put this down. Good kill. Not bad. And that's basically game. Yeah, finish off a build here. I would get the Bloodthirster and the Stone Plate, essentially. And that would be a full build. The Navori would be switched for Infinity Edge if the enemy team is super squishy. But this is really the way to play it. And, uh, I mean, this was a little bit more of a macro game and a little bit less of a colossal teamfight game, but, yeah, I mean, point stance, build is updated, and I'll see you guys in the endgame stats. Alright, so for the endgame stats here, I am assuming my damage is going to be pretty low, since there were less fights going on on this one specifically, and I overall made more map plays for, like, macro, so let's see. Yep, only 14.3k. Which is very unsurprising, because for the most part, I just went in for certain ganks, gave like a bit of damage here and there, not too much, but secured like my top laner completely, who then got kind of walked in towards, which is really good here, I suppose. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you don't always have to do all the damage, you know. True damage, I had about 2200, this is also fine here. Objective damage, which is obviously the thing I focused on more this game. I did lose like a couple of dragons, but for the most part, getting like the heralds and the barons and stuff like that, and not like holding on to a good overall map rotation, like giving my Alawi that lead and all that. It's just more macro based this game and a little bit less fight based, which is fine. I think this is a perfectly fine one as a situation to realize how much the thing can matter. So, very good here, good objective damage. We have healing done at about 20k here as well, that's good. Damage taken at 28k, still taking quite a significant amount of damage in these fights, and was able to take quite a significant amount of damage in these fights as well, even though my damage output is slightly lower here. Self-mitigated at 20k too, so yeah, a bit more damage taken, a bit less damage done this game, but completely fine, man. It, it, it happens sometimes, you don't have to uh, have the option, I guess, to do as much damage as possible. So, yeah, that's really how that worked out. And for the ruins, Conquer healed me for about 500, which is pretty nice. But obviously, the adaptive damage is something that really matters here. Now uh, we have the Triumph. Not too much healing restored here, uh, but that's a decent amount of gold, I suppose. Some tenacity. Lost stand did practically nothing here as well, because for the most part, I wasn't really that low HP. And this only kicks in on lower HPs. But in those situations where it does matter, it matters quite a bit. I wonder even if, um, if my damage is lying. It could be potentially... Because what I have to think about as well is the fact that there is currently that bug that if I like have Kraken Slayer damage, for example, on my items and you check the tab stat with it, that uh, if I pick up enemy passives or enemy champions, ghosts, whatever, and play as them, that the damage doesn't count or like the Kraken Slayer like damage timer resets. So I wonder if that's what's going on here as well, because I feel like even though I'm expecting this to be a bit lower, this might have been a like low to the point where I'm like, I'm not sure if this is actually accurate or if it actually counts the damage because it does reset my Kraken Slayer damage and my Blood of the Rune King damage as well in certain situations when I pick up passives and stuff like that. So that's a bit, uh, that will be an interesting one if that's actually the case. But I mean, yeah, it's all good. Unflinching here, tenacity, CC reduction is just great. Uh, these two are enough in pretty much all situations to have enough CC reduction to uh, survive things so you don't have to build mercs or have to go green smite or anything you can just pick these two and you're perfectly fine with cc reduction but yeah i mean that's it for viego and um 
I'll see you guys in the next video.